Take my hand, we're off the Never Never Land, the usually electric entrance to enter Sandbed by Metallica. Very, very different tonight. Metallica in attendance in the front row, but the chaos replaced by cardboard cutouts. The Hokies will have to bring all of their own energy and emotion tonight. There'll be no help from the crowd, and they must pull everything they've got together because they're taking on the defending ACC champs at a very tough time, and they know it. This is what we call the championship phase. The championship phase. It's a refrain. The Clemson Tigers, champions of the ACC. One of the Clemson Tigers have repeated for the last five years. We have the opportunity to go compete for the ACC, but we've got to earn our way there. It's about turning it up a notch. The intensity, the execution, the drive. dominate yet again. It's nothing new for Trevor Lawrence or the team he leads. What a throw by Trevor Lawrence. But first, the trip to Blacksburg, where the Hokies are hungry for an upset. Hokie, Hokie high. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Championship phase is in full force. <laughs> On Saturday night football. Champs against the challengers from Blacksburg. You're watching a presentation of the ACC on ESPN. Dabo Sweeney came up with the phrase, championship phase. His players fully buy in. Trevor Lawrence knows every game, every drive is precious. After going four weeks without playing, Skalski set to bring that aggressive defense, and the Tigers will kick it away. Herbert, the returner, watches the ball sail over his head. Here is Herndon Hooker. The dad, Allen, was a MEAC Hall of Famer, played quarterback in North Carolina A&T. He's shown flashes as a passer. He's been a very willing runner. That's been a necessary part of this offense. Big six foot four quarterback. Big quarterback who can run, not afraid to run. He'll have to do that tonight to get to the attention of this Clemson defense. First carry goes to the man they call Juice Herbert. Had a pretty good 1,500-yard career at Kansas, but has blown out of the scene here at Blacksburg. Chick-fil-A impact players. Yeah, he, I, I, early in the year, especially the doing so many amazing things. We just talked about Herbert. At some point, they're going to have to throw the ball and win in man-to-man -man coverage. Trey Turner, 11. The guy to watch, Chris, talked about James Skowski. Great to see him back in the last week and just providing tremendous leadership. And Nolan Turner, uh, you know, Owen Turner's been around. He's played in a lot of games. In a game like this, we talked to him this week on a Zoom, just talking about getting the defense in the secondary. Everybody on the same page. Can't afford any mental mistakes. Yeah, the band is getting back together at the right time for Clemson. Hooker play action. It's a screen to James Mitchell, the tight end. Makes a move. Fighting near first down yardage. He'll be stopped just short by big Tyler Davis, the defensive tackle. I really like that call because Brent Venable's defense, one thing they do is they fly around, especially early in the game. And by getting them to go with that jet look, that jet sweep action, go back against the, the uh, aggressiveness of that defense is a good call and enough to get the first down. Yeah, they spot the nose just at the 35, so they do move the sticks. I'm used to seeing Tempo Kirk from Virginia Tech, but Justin Fuente said that may not be the uh, plan tonight. No, not tonight. He talked about going for it on fourth down. The importance of possessing the ball, obviously, to keep the high-powered Clemson offense and Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne on the sideline. Herbert again running left. Spins and comes back. He's averaging more than eight yards a carry. The guy that has been bothered by a hamstring, but now he's back healthy. Uh, right now, he's he's running into a, an eight and even nine man box. The safeties are coming downhill. Uh, it's one thing to, you know to, to sustain drives against Clemson is a really tough thing to do because they're so multiple. You got to at some point hit some plays on the perimeter, or a tight end can win in man to man. A back, you know, out of the backfield, number six, Blackshear Herbert. They've got to make some explosives tonight. It's tough to go. 80 yards and 10 plays against this Tiger defense. He used Blackshear, the backup tailback, in the slot a lot. He's in there now. Good receiver. Bobble snap. Hooker trying to avoid disaster. 
Ball on the ground. He does recover it. Miles Murphy was right there. Really a perfect snap. I, I don't know what he, other than just maybe losing the grip, the ball is perfectly brought back to him. I think maybe he starts to peak. Maybe he starts to look downfield. He's very fortunate he got that football. See if the, yeah, it looks like the eyes started to peak maybe at a read where he's going to get the ball out of his hands quickly, and he's lucky he got it before Miles Murphy, the freshman, got to the football. On a cold night, you take nothing for granted. He was grimacing after the play. That's all that. But boy, early, these first few plays kind of doing what they wanted to do now, third and forever. 13th in the ACC on third down. Good luck needing 20. Quarterback keeper, and that's a nice looking run. It's back to the original line of scrimmage before Bale and Spectre stopped him, and here comes the punt team. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was really a, a good example of Virginia Tech and how the margin of error tonight is going to be very slight. They, they, they need to avoid miscues, any offense does, but especially this offense that relies on the running game and staying ahead of the sticks and not making a mistake, whether it's a penalty or dropping a snap to get him way behind the sticks. Pretty good breeze left to right to the Aussie four year starting punter Oscar Bradford will boot it into that breeze and Amari Rogers is standing at the Tigers 25. It's a high boot and a fair catch made at the 28. So Trevor Lawrence and the Tiger offense first possession coming up in Blacksburg. Third win as a Clemson starting quarterback which would give him Sole possession of the record. Travis Etienne, dangerous receiver as well as a runner in this 2020 Tigers offense to his left. They come out throwing in the flat to Rogers, slips a tackle and a nice first down gain of about six. Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator from Clemson, visiting with us this week, said, you know, it's, and it's every opponent they play. If we study film, we look at everything, and then because of who we are and, and our, our our style of offense, we have our quarterback and tailback, a lot of times they come out in a different look. So we got to adjust on the fly to what we see. Rodgers move around. He comes off a 10-catch game at Pittsburgh. There's a handoff straight ahead to ETN near first down yardage. On a chilly night, a warm welcome to Maria Taylor. I Get the band back it, together, Maria. Yes, I'm taking all the warm welcomes that you can send <laughs> my way. And we just saw Travis ETN take his first brush of the ball game. And you know, Tony Elliott said that he was dinged up in that Notre Dame game, but he's finally feeling closer to 100%. Now he's talked to him a lot about his mindset to make sure he gets out of his head during this game, but he too, like me, doesn't like the cold weather, but the best way to get around that is to get off to a hot start, guys. And eluding the rush, Braden Galloway in the clear. Lawrence got it to him after a nifty sidestep of traffic. Devin Taylor saves a touchdown, but it's down inside the Hokies 15. Uh, they, they brought pressure from out here, and the linebacker lines up with ETN. Nobody's there to pick Galloway up up the middle. See the pressure. The problem is if you don't get to Trevor Lawrence and nobody picks up that tight end, he's going to find him. ETN straight ahead. Picking up what Maria said, coming from Louisiana, he makes no secret of the fact that he hates cold weather. But they were telling him, hey, Travis, you got to show the NFL in case a cold weather team wants to draft you. You don't mind the cold. It's a good selling point. Yeah, and that I, I really like that Tony Elliott, who works with the backs, I know he's the host offensive coordinator, he said, I'm, ch I'm challenging him to finish strong, not just in Blacksburg, but the you know what's left on our schedule and potentially down the road. I, I like that they're being proactive with that. He certainly is fresh for the home stretch. Nowhere near the workload that he had last year. From the pocket, Lawrence has plenty of time. Zips it across the middle, and it's broken up nicely there. In well, the coverage was Armani Chapman. Yep, Chapman got in front of Powell. Powell kind of gave up on the route. He'll be off to the right. Trevor Lawrence put a lot on this. Looking left to Galloway, but look how Powell just kind of gives up on the route. You can see he kind of said, that's that's, my, that's on me, that's my bad. But give uh, Chapman, 27, a lot of credit for his positioning there to force Powell to just kind of shut it down. Powell's been on a tear. Three consecutive 100-yard receiving games. Nobody's ever had four in a row at Clemson. Etienne, he motioned it out, and he is tracked down very quickly. That's a nice tackle in the open field there by Chamari Connor. Boy, Connor does a really good job of, of taking the responsibility. Justin Hamilton said, how are we going to tackle in space 
against a fleet-footed back like ETN. Look at him get around the potential block and end up making that tackle. The fact that Amari Rogers didn't even try to ta uh, block him tells me that they thought ETN could win that one-on-one -on -one matchup, but that time Connor does it. So the big play by Galloway puts him inside the 15, but then the Hokies defense rises up. This is a huge win for them to force the field goal attempt from BT Potter. And Potter, very reliable for short range, knocks it through. 61-yard drive with the lead, 3-0 for Clemson. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? It's a Michael Vick finale in the Gator Bowl. Of course, the year before that, playing for the national championship, 99 season. Lost it to Florida State down in the Superdome. That's when they really began to barge their way into center stage nationally. at and 5G Skycam, at and 5G Skycast, streaming live on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. Michael Vick just took the Frank Beamer era from a blue collar, hard working, we're going to outwork it type of team to an elite athlete doing it a very different way. Potter's kicks just aren't returned, period. Khalil Herbert went from Florida to Lawrence, Kansas, had a nice career there, but then he escaped the land of tornadoes to head to beautiful bucolic Virginia. And he's been, he's been a revelation. Number one in FBS all-purpose yards, bunch of yards after contact, closing in on 1,000 rushing yards this season. They've been a 1,000-yard rusher in a long time here. I go to Myrtle Beach for game day, and you guys put together a nice little cartoon there. That was nice. <laughs> Didn't know anything about that. They made a change of quarterback. They brought in Braxton Burmeister. We thought this might happen if they need a spark. He's the guy that has missed the last three games, broke some toes in practice. The transfer from Oregon, also kind of a dual threat guy. Yeah, he played very well early, really known for his ability to run the football. But how about Nolan Turner coming up and making that play on Mitchell? No hesitation at all from 24. Pulled the trigger, made a good play for a, a loss. Remember I talked about you got to stay ahead of the chains. You don't want to get to that second long that eventually leads to third and long. Offense just not built this year to be able to handle that. Behind the six again for second and 13. They use almost all the play clock. Tigers bring pressure. Long throw near side. And the catch is made. Shanga Hodge brought down by Kendrick. You hear the reaction from the Virginia Tech sideline because they love the effort by Hodge to, to try to break through that potential tackle by Kendrick. And even though he only picked up a few yards, it was just the attitude that it represented. Now they got a shot here on third down. I thought it was part of the plan to bring in Burmeister. It's, it's unclear if perhaps Hooker, who is grimacing at the Fumbled snap yeah, in the he, first series. He was. I don't know if anything's wrong with him. We'll keep an eye on it. But in the meantime, Burmeister comes in pretty cold here. Remember, his his wheels are a threat. If things are covered, he can pull down and run. Clemson will probably have to spy him. On third and five, they bring heavy pressure. He escapes and fights and makes a first down. Had to really earn it before Spectre. But you see the quickness from him. Yeah, that's what I was talking about on third down. And, and I really love the effort right here by her. Brent Venables dials up a blitz. Good job of picking up Malcolm Green. And then there it is. You, you got to have a spy. And I know that Brent Venables is multiple on third down, likes to bring a lot of pressure. But with these athletic quarterbacks from, from Virginia Tech, that's the biggest, that's probably their, potentially their most successful play on third down as a quarterback pulling it down and picking up yards. If you factor out the sack yard, which I don't think should be counted as a quarterback rush yard, you have more than 1,000 yards combined from the three quarterbacks here. Very few teams can say that. So on first down, pitch to Herbert. Again, they're trying the left side. There's just nothing there. Flying up and filling is Spectre. Boy, nice to see Spectre this year merging as one of the leaders of this defense. You know, Chad Smith moved on, number 43, played a long time for Clemson. Inspector, former high school quarterback at DB, tremendous athlete, as we've seen Skalski go down and, and miss three games. Jake Venable stepped up for Skalski, but it was really Specter who, pro, who provided that leadership in that front seven. You can see that athletic ability there as he closed on that run. Top tackler in the defense and a guy who has been given quarterbacks headaches all season long. 
Second and nine, three receivers bunch to the right. Pressure comes again. They get it quickly to the edge. The black shear and the transfer from Rikers is a versatile player. Good catch. Another first down near midfield. Like to get the ball out there. They told us all week in his ability as a tailback that he can catch the ball. It's a reverse look at it. Get the ball out in space and then outrun Jake Venables. Venables was kind of the player in conflict. He was in the box and he was also out of the box. And that time, Burmeister decided to get the ball out quickly and make Venables have to chase him down. And heck of a job of getting the ball out there quickly. So Burmeister, a spark for this offense, even though he's missed the last three games with those broken toes from the practice field. Two tight ends motion over on this first down play. Burmeister steps up and delivers. Wide open downfield catch made by Tavian Robinson makes a move still running down inside the five a bust for the Tigers he was wide open well, a lot of pre snap movement a lot of eye candy and then a busting coverage what watch this Clemson defense nobody in the left flat a lot of eyes on the quarterback a lot of anticipation a potential run but I think they got confused with a lot of movement with the tight ends and they just busted coverage there and Give Burmeister credit. He had time to throw, and he located it, made a nice throw. Nice, accurate throw. And Robinson on a cold night, a nice fingertip catch. So the Hokies, a chance to take the early lead, and the opportunities like this are essential. You get a first and goal at the four. You've got to find the end zone if you want to pull the upset of Clemson. Herbert picks his way, and Waltz is in, scores standing up. What a drive from this Hokie offense as Burmeister comes in and sparks them. It really an incredible job on this drive. Good mix. And look how they open this up on the left side. Blocked there by Mitchell. Dershaw, who's one of the top tackles, I think, not only in the ACC, but as a young sophomore, one of the tops in the country. When they get into short yardage in the, in, and inside that five-yard line, they'll run left more often, and they opened it up. Aerosol left the pit game early with an injury, and they suckle. He's a top-20 Mel Kite yeah. draft board guy, one of the top tackles of the country. Herbert and the Hokies are on top 7-3. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Keep driving from the first kickoff to the final whistle. Goodyear more driven. Nice drive for the Hokies. 75 yards and seven plays. Braxton Burmeister off the bench. Four for four in the drive. Guy who hadn't taken a snap since October the 10th against Carolina. That's a incredibly impressive first drive. Yeah, he, he looked he looked very calm considering the defense that he's going up against. John Parker Romo who booted away the kickoff specialist. And Michael Dukes with the fair catch. And James Kowski not in there to provide leadership, but on the back end, there was some confusion on that big pass play. Watch, watch Joseph, uh, Joseph Charleston in the back end here. He's already kind of confused, looking to Nolan Turner for some help. Now that they move the tight ends, I don't think he's real sure. He's man to man on the outside right here with Robinson. He respects the play fake. Now he's out of position. They lose Robinson. So man to man. Little bit of a wrinkle. He's confused as a young player, doesn't quite get right, and they give up a big play through the air. Kirk, it's the first time this year the Tigers have trailed with Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. They were down against BC and, of course, Notre Dame when Uyangalale was the quarterback. This is a first for Trevor. ETN picks up about five. I think a lot of people have looked at this offense now that Trevor Lawrence is back and said, well, you know, people are loading up on, on ETN in the running game. But if you really study it and watch it, I think they want to get more consistent with the offensive line. Keep in mind, four new offensive linemen. So it's not just people crowding the line. They really want more detail and finishing blocks up front. Second and five long throw. Catch made by Powell. It's a first down. You saw the dominance by the Tigers in the first quarter. They've held six different opponents scoreless in the first quarter, but not tonight. The 31 point first quarter in their last oh, game against God. Pittsburgh. School record. Yeah, they, 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 they definitely. I, I thought, boy, these guys may score 100 today the way that game started. If they'd wanted to, they might have. Yeah. 
Play action. Lawrence has some time and launches downfield into triple coverage. There were three Hokie defenders surrounding Powell. No chance that time. No, they, they have jet sweep with Rodgers. They fake a handoff, and they're just trying to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup, trying to get the safe team Diablo out of position. You see 17 comes back, but pretty good coverage there. Murray's out there by himself without Diablo if he doesn't come back. But, oh, boy, we got the sprinklers going off here on the field. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. As if we didn't get enough rain <laughs> last night. Uh, you know what? What's going on here, boys? It's 2020, Kirk. Okay, oh, yeah. okay players are, are jumping around, I guess, as acting like a little kid. And they'll, they'll, they'll stop at nothing to try to slow Clemson's offense down here. <laughs> Dax Holyfield ran over to the sprinkler saying, let's do it. Let's jump in it. <laughs> it's a little cold for that. Uh, defensive players, man. They're different mentality. They, they love it. You say Murray got there a little early. No flag on Powell, but he did arrive before the football. So second and ten. Pitch it to ETN, makes a nice cut and accelerates. And you see the speed of ETN. It's a first down into Tech territory. And Virginia Tech so worried about his speed to the outside. They are running, running, and he recognizes it and gets back underneath that. They want to get outside. Don't get, don't get beat out to the corner. Boom, he puts his foot in the ground, does a nice job of getting upfield for first down yardage. Last five games, Travis has been held under 100 yards. Then Jay Dixon spells him. Norris looking the other way, incomplete. It was Rodgers in heavy traffic for the screen. Okay, this defense right now pretty dialed in. I mean, even if that ball is caught, you've got Raymond, uh, Rayshard Ashby right there ready to make a tackle. Justin Hamilton, who has stepped in admirably for the defensive coordinator of our generation, Bud Foster, he played for him. and. He's had uh, one arm tied behind his back this year with a lot of issues in the secondary. Play action, they flip it in the flat. Davis Allen, the tight end, muscles down to the 40. He's about a yard short of the first down. They use the tight ends a lot this year and in creative ways. You heard the reaction from Virginia Tech, Chris. Amari Rogers hooked a Virginia Tech defender who had a chance to make a tackle, and there was no call there. In fact, it was uh, Chamari Connor who was trying to make a play on the ball, but unable to get there. No call on the field. ETN back in on third and a half yard. Two tight end look. And it's Travis showing that leg drive. First down at the 33. Let's go to Maria. Yeah, I'm just checking in with the grounds crew, and I talked to Tyler, and he said basically it was already on a night cycle, and that might have been why the sprinklers came back on, but they're working on it as we speak and making sure it doesn't happen again. We're going to get to the bottom of this. We thing. do. We don't want this to happen again. I'll Somebody checking, forgot honey. to reset the timer. That does happen. Trevor on the move, and a throw on target. Rogers with a little crease there inside the 20. Great patience by Trevor Lawrence. He had Galloway, the tight end, in the flat, but waited for Rodgers to clear open downfield. Gives him a chance. Good job adjusting back to the ball. Boy, Amari Rodgers had a nice year this year. 60 catches now on the season. Not much for ETN on first down. He's had a couple hundred-yard receiving games, been used in a different way, but again, for the stretch run, He's very fresh. And a good battle up front tonight is, is the quickness. And they're not big, Virginia Tech, but they are quick. And they'll slant, they'll angle, they'll twist against the size of Clemson. You can see already Virginia Tech getting off of blocks. They don't have to necessarily crowd the line with safeties. Extremely undersized, but they're athletic and they're active. Here's a keeper for Lawrence. Gets a block, makes a cut, and scores standing up. Davis Allen paved the way as Lawrence rumbles in for his fifth rushing touchdown this season. He almost could feel it coming. He, he, they've run that play two or three times where he's reading it. He's given it when it's been a little bit of a gray area. This time, Barno, 38 on the edge. He reads, and he kind of froze, but Trevor Lawrence decides to pull it because he's got great speed and is able to obviously get to the corner and into the end zone. The bigger the game for Clemson, the more likely you're going to see the quarterback run. It's been a tradition in recent years, whether you're talking about Deshaun Watson 
Kelly Bryant and now Lawrence to the last three. Potter, the extra point, and the Tigers very quickly answer. They are behind no more on the scoreboard. Yeah, he's, he's just making a read right here. You're right about the, 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 the backs right there. He's just trying to decide, is he going to come down? He's kind of frozen. If he comes down too far and he feels he can get outside, he will pull the ball. It's exactly what he did. You see him kind of squeeze. That's the zone read, and now he's got a good block there by the tight end, Davis Allen. And that's the thing about Trevor Lawrence, man. They, that, they're, they're figuring it out based on 38. If 38 stays wide, he'll hand it off. So they really don't know who's going to get the ball while they're in that mesh point until they make the read on which way 38 commits. But Lawrence has gotten better and better with that play, and then they run play action off of it, which is tough to do. The kid is a great athlete. I know he's an NFL quarterback, and he can sling it, but in college football, he's dangerous running. A nice opportunity for Allen to showcase his skills. Tony Elliott's favorite player on the offense, he says. The tight end from Georgia just has a great work ethic, great attitude. Does whatever they ask him, and they ask him to block that time. Herbert will not be busy as a returner tonight. These kickoffs are going to land very deep. To Kevin Nagandi in the studio for an update. It's like a feisty game there. It is. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm still looking on the field for James Skowski. He was not on the field in that second series. He's not on the field to start this series. A, we've talked all year about the importance of having 47 to this front seven. And uh, Jake Venables is in for him. And now you see the third linebacker, Kane Patterson, running in for him. Herbert with the game there, and that's the end of a fast-paced first quarter. Hokies had the lead briefly, 10-7 for the Tigers. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Set for the second quarter. Cups up 10-7. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Capital One. Hokies to work here. Second and six. But the concern is for the linebacking core of the Tigers. That was Jake Venables who went to the locker room. James Skowski, as Kirk pointed out, was not in there for that last series. James Mitchell, the tight end, has first down yards. So they down to Kane Patterson, the third string middle linebacker. Yeah, I'm very familiar with Kane Patterson. He's a, a big time recruit out of actually Nashville. A uh, great athlete when he came out, and he's more than capable. Just you lose experience. Uh, James Skowski is, that's what's made him so great, is how he makes others around him good. And we got another Clemson player. It's Tyler here. Davis on the near sidelines. The, Guy who's, oh you know, finally gotten healthy. He missed five games and has been reunited with the freshman Brian Bercy. They're an imposing uh, middle oh. that defensive line. Looks like he's moving okay, but that left arm is being held to his side. So Clemson, some concern with star defenders nicked up. We'll take a break. Was on the left there on the sideline didn't appear to be too serious. Skowski has his helmet back on, but again, as Kirk said, left after the first series. It's really unclear what's going on. He came back last week against Pittsburgh, missed three weeks with a sports hernia, which is a, a tricky injury that you can re-aggravate pretty yeah. easily. And, and other than Nolan Turner on the back end, 24, I, I would tell you that Skowski and Tyler Davis, because of not only their experience, they played in the national championship, the leaders, they make the guys around them better. Uh, that's what they missed when they went to South Bend was 13 and, and 47 in the middle of that defense. Now they're without three key guys on defense at the moment as Tech goes back to work. Running left is Herbert. Gets the edge, lowers the shoulder, and that's a first down gain. He ran over Turner over there. That's really good vision here, and it gives you an idea of what Herbert can do with his power. Uh, he goes right through Pinckney. The vision in this ball is put, again, much like ETN, puts his foot down, able to break through uh, tackles. You have Malcolm Green. Once he builds up momentum, he's got low center of gravity. He's a tough guy to bring down. Tyler Davis back in the football game. That's good defensive to see. tackle position. Great to see. And I, I love your point. We, we're talking about Brzee and Davis together. Boy, what a future. One's a true sophomore, and Davis and a true freshman, Brzee. Two 300-pounders in the middle. Burmeister, a long throw. He 
and the catch made out there in the perimeter by Changa Hodge, his second catch. Oh, this guy Burmeister right now. Got, how long's it been since he's played? You he played since October 10th. He, he's mid-season form here. That, that was a, a run-pass option. Recognized he had soft coverage. Decides instead of running the ball, they're going to get it outside and get the ball out to the receivers. Just get positive yards. That's that's a, a good decision. Six for six. Stretching out the, the legs there. Comes over to the sideline for a quick conference. They're they're breaking the huddle very late in the play sure. clock, trying to avoid uh, adjustments by well, the Adjustments and work, the, work a little clock. It's a run all the way. And he's near first down yardage inside the 45. Miles Murphy on the stop. Yeah, quarterback run game is a big part of this offense. Whether it's Hooker or Burmeister, it gives you an extra blocker for this defense to account for. Staying, this is where they obviously want to be in the second, medium, third, and short. And they are continuing to just take their time. Brent Venables is known all over the country, and especially in the ACC, makes adjustments late based on your formations, your personnel groupings, gets late calls in based on what he sees. And every team that plays him tries to come up with a wrinkle on how to how to navigate that and deal with it. On third down, Herbert sidesteps the tackler and makes first down yardage. He didn't have much time to look, does he? Because they're giving him almost nothing pre-snap the hook. No, you're right. And I, I love this jump cut. You talked about, you know, it looks like it's going to go in the middle. Boom, foot in the ground, bounces it to the outside. Just instincts as a ball carrier. I don't think Herbert gets the recognition nationally he deserves because Virginia Tech hasn't had a, a strong year you know, as far as wins and losses. But I know that uh, people that follow college football in the ACC know what 21's capable of doing. They really thought that Blackshear would be the feature back this year once they got Herbert in camp and they began to see in the yeah. practice field. Wait a minute, we got yeah. something special? They didn't realize he had that kind of acceleration. They knew he was a power back. Tries to pick his way and makes another cut back to the middle, and they'll take that kind of gain on the first down. This defense, when you lose James Skowski, you, you lose an extension of Brent Venables into the front seven. You have similar abilities with the players that replace them, but just a world of difference as far as having a, essentially a coach on the field in the middle of that defense when Skalski's out there. I just, I, I don't know about you, I don't know how this game's going to end. Virginia Tech and Justin Fuente, they don't look in all Clemson. They don't look in, that they're intimidated. They look like they're just out there executing their plan right now. Also bringing the fight, which after three straight losses, we're not, we weren't guaranteed to see that. Herbert brings the fight. He stepped out of bounds. We're cutting back. But the gain is to the Tigers 25, and the Hokies are threatening again. Love to see the blocks by Mitchell, the tight end, and Trey Turner. Watch 82 right here sustain his block and kind of set the edge to get the ball to the outside. 83 also, Robinson does his job and gives Herbert a nice alley out there on the perimeter. Herbert, who needed 76 coming in, closing in on 1,000 yards with... 45 on his nine carries. You, you keep pounding 21. You get quarterback run, maybe play action. Keep going with it. That time, nowhere to run. He's just knocked backwards. It was clogged as the Tiger defense reset the line of scrimmage. Davis pushed him back. Patterson was there for the tackle. Yeah, Miles Murphy didn't allow him to get outside. He did a really nice job of getting upfield. And then you can see Kane Patterson doing an outstanding job taking it, taking the fight to the defense. Instead of allowing that defense to come up to the second level, he's coming downhill using his vision and his athletic ability. Nowhere to go that time for Herbert. That's why I thought, you know, it's it's almost you're due for something. Just break a, break a tendency, play action maybe on first and ten. A breather for the workhorse and Jalen Holston, the junior from Georgia, in a tailback. But it's Blackshear. Burmeister looking to throw. And... Instead, has to just scramble forward, and now a flag thrown at the point of the tackle. Specter was there who hit him. You could hear the pads popping up here on a cold night in an empty house. Well, when you see a flag thrown at a tackle, you always wonder, did he lower the crown of his he helmet when he made contact? After the play, personal oh, foul. Okay. Offense, number 76, 15-yard penalty, third down. Brock Hoffman is the center, kind of rumbling over there. That is a crucial penalty, a crushing one for the Hokies. 
just completely unnecessary yeah. jumping on the pile jumped on Patterson's back. Wow. Moves the ball back to the 39 and sets up a third and 24. Yeah, you can remember that. You can remember that play. I know you want to protect your quarterback if you're an old lineman. Maybe he didn't like the hit, deliver, but that was lose your mind moment. Well, you go from third and seven to now third and 24. Now they just hand the ball off to Holston and he'll be dropped behind the line of scrimmage. So after threatening, Hokies go backwards. That penalty was crippling Trenton Simpson the true freshman yeah. playing in this defense made the stop that time we talked on the first drive when they missed a snap if you're going to try to play with Clemson and you're going to try to pull off an upset you can't you can't have silly mistakes you can't beat yourself you can't self-destruct they had a great drive going there 11 play drive I mean they're eating clock they're doing exactly what they wanted to do and then to have a mental air like that from Hoffman who's the leader of that of that offensive line just a miscue mental air only do you not score a touchdown, you move yourself out of field goal range with that penalty. And so Bradburn unable to knock it dead. The coverage team couldn't collect the ball, and it's a touchback. So up by a field goal, Trevor and Travis show back to work after this quick break. Saturday Night Football, presented by Capital One on ABC, is brought to you by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. One by four touchdowns as the lower-ranked team. First ACC championship for Davos Winnie back in 2011 before they took total control of the ACC. College Football Playoff Top 25 show, presented by AT&T 5G. Of the rankings, no change from week one to two among the top seven. We'll see if the Hokies can really shake things up tonight. Notre Dame taking care of business. Ohio State, AM, Florida. 16 plays. That's all the Tigers have run. They've only had the ball about six minutes tonight. Lawrence on first down, running out of time and almost intercepted. Armani Chapman came in and had it in his hands and could not hold it a chance for a huge momentum play. Well, he's human, right? He locks in on the receivers that are working towards the middle of the field. Watch the eyes of Trevor Lawrence. He's looking downfield. Here's the tight end who he eventually throws to, and he just doesn't realize that the corner came off a of man coverage, and he throws it out there. The corner was in man, came out of man, and just kind of sat there right where the tight end was going. He didn't recognize it. Etn makes a cut, and then the sophomore from Virginia Beach just couldn't hold on. They need to make plays yeah. like this tonight. Yeah, every little play. I mean, that's 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 gift wrapped right to you. Trevor Lawrence very rarely, if ever, makes a, a mental error like that. But again, he's a human being. He's he's entitled to once in a while make a, a, a misread. A split second longer if he controls the ball. That's an interception. Couldn't quite maintain control of the ground. Third and six. Lawrence eludes a rush, running, and now firing incomplete. Maybe had a chance to get there with his legs. Tried to find Galloway. Taylor in coverage in his fourth down. And Justin Hamilton brought pressure, forced Trevor Lawrence to step up. I thought he might run for it, but instead, last second, tries to squeeze it into Galloway. And the Hokies get Lawrence and this offense off the field with a three and out. Nice job by Devin Taylor, the safety, just kind of boxing Galloway yeah. out, putting you out, knocked him out of bounds. They've used various punt returners, and now they've got the tight end back there. James Mitchell to receive the punt, which will bounce in front of him on one hop. Big fella, not built like a typical punt returner. They've had problems back there returning punts. Tavian Robbins was an All-American last year. He's fumbled three this year. All hands on deck. Hokies get the ball back. Time to check in in the Bears den. Chris Felica with her. Affleck trivia question this week. I'm going to give you guys a chance tonight with the Affleck trivia question. <laughs> At four and five right now, that Hokie uh, Bowl Street could be in jeopardy. You're going to need one key piece of information. Let's see if you know it. Uh, which team won the national championship and who won the Heisman Trophy? The last time Virginia Tech did not play in a bowl game. 
You know, the streak is 27 years. I can't do the math and call the plays at the same time. <laughs> this wow. there, catch made by Blackshear out of the backfield, and he scoots for a gain down near the Clemson 40. Again, that's recognition by Burmeister to get the ball out where you've got a chance with Blackshear against Nolan Turner with some space to work with. He, he had the option to hand that off if he liked what he what he saw in the in the box area against that that front, or just get it out quick. And that's we've seen him do that a few times now, where he sees a matchup out there where he thinks his receivers can win. I'm trying to do the math in between plays, I I try to go there it, a little is bit. It, is it Charlie time. Ward in Florida State? That would be the answer. I'm just I just I know it's a 27-year bowl streak. That's a good one. Chris, math can't be involved in these things. <laughs> We're in the middle of trying to do this job. <laughs> and it's a first down carry. They, they got something going with Herbert. This is this is good success. This offensive line is unheralded, but it's a solid bunch. Yeah. Well, watch Hoffman. We talked about him with the penalty 76. Does a good job of climbing up and being able to get a, a block here to kind of open it up. This is an offensive line that Justin Fuente said it's the best he's had. 54 Smith does a nice job sustaining his block. They're going against some really good defensive linemen. Davis is out there. They're getting up to the backers. Not easy to do against Clemson. Run between the tackles. Offensive line that's gotten up to some slow starts in the losses to Miami in fifth. It took a while to get the ground game going in those two games. On the edge. And the catch made slipping immediately there. If you cut the ball was Robinson. Look at how Khalil Herbert has done his work tonight. Yeah, he, he's done a lot of it between the tackles, but we've also seen him use his vision when he's been able to bounce outside, use that stiff arm, low center of gravity, hard to bring down. He's a compact runner, but he'll surprise you with how sudden he can be if he, if he gets a step on you. And he looks healthy. It's the best he's looked in weeks. It's 31 yards tonight already after contact. Injured his hamstring on the opening kickoff against Liberty, and that was a part of that shocking loss here. End around. Black Shear, nowhere to go. He'll lose yardage back to back. Tackles for loss of the Tigers defense. Great play by Xavier Thomas right here. He gets upfield, doesn't allow the speed of Black Shear. See how he fights through some tackles, sets that edge. Now you let the rest of the defense be able to take away that speed. So really good job in recognizing the potential of that jet sweep and getting upfield in a hurry and not letting the speed of Virginia Tech, whether it's been Herbert or Blackshear, you take that away. Let the rest of those white jerseys run to the ball. Don't see if Burmeister can, can make a play, Kirk. Back-to-back -back possessions. Hokies have been in position to threaten and then been knocked backwards. Third and 13. Long throw over the shoulder and over the hands of Changa Hodge, who had a step. And it four down. Did. He got he got behind Sheridan Jones. I mean, they take a shot, low percentage throw on third down. He goes right by him, throws it where it needs to be over the outside shoulder. Just needed to put a little bit more air under it to allow Hodge to adjust to the ball. Brian Johnson's a long distance kicker. He's tried 10 in his career from beyond 50 yards. He's made three of them. This would just about equal his career long. He does have the win at his back here. Trying to tie the game. Drives it. It's low and it's good from 55. Brian Johnson equals his career long and Tech has drawn even with the Tigers. 10 apiece. the angle it's a surprising first half here good year providing their aerial coverage no matter what the season throws your way keep moving forward good year more driven officially a 54 yard field goal by brian johnson ties the score at 10 inside of four minutes to play before halftime once has barely had the football just 19 plays and so far Hokies were four and two liberty was a close game they had blocked a field goal but Fuente had called a timeout just before, so on the mulligan, the field goal is good. Liberty shocks the world, and the Hokies never recovered. They had the lead against Miami, but then the Hurricanes' late touchdown pass.
Well, I think this the combination of these two games took the wind out of their sails. This is a game that Miami in the recent years would lose, but instead it's Virginia Tech, and then they go to Pitt, and they just did not have the same kind of spirit that they're playing with tonight. So They lost by 33 to the same Pittsburgh team that Clemson beat by 35 a week ago. So you, the comparison score, that's a 68-point swing. We did not expect 10-10 near halftime. No, sure. no, but this is what makes college football, even in the middle of a global pandemic, so great. It's just unpredictable. And you get you get a team that's playing inspired football, and you get them to all believe, and so far they believe in a 10-10 game. Clemson talks a lot about the last four minutes of the first half, first four of the second half. They're very efficient and very effective at this time during the game. I'll tell you what's been amazing is the time of possession. You mentioned it last time Trevor Lawrence was out there. I mean, they've only been out there close to eight minutes and haven't had near the ball nearly as often. And you, we, we keep recognizing that Justin Fuente is waiting until about five seconds to snap the ball, and it has everything to do with keeping 16 on the sideline. And it's worked so far. Lawrence with a keeper. Scored a touchdown earlier. Another effective run. He's just short of the marker near the 50. Ashby on the stop. And, and again, I, I, I'm always so impressed that Trevor Lawrence is, is a willing runner. He has no problem doing what he just did. And, and a lot of times people, all they think about is the NFL. And they'll, they'll raise an eyebrow like, wow, why is he running? And if you told him not to run, he would not accept that. The, the dude wants to run the ball. And if you're Virginia Tech, it's I'd rather have 16 running it than nine. So they're, they're trying to make Clemson work their way down the field. Move the ball to the initial spot. I'm right on the 50, Kirk. He didn't quite make it, but it's a first hit anyway. <laughs> now they feed ETN off the left side, about a three-yard gain. Yeah, the, the less time this Hokie defense, which is shorthanded, spends on the field, the better their chances. And so far, the, the game management plan at Fuente has worked out very well, as you said. They continue to bottle up Travis Etienne, and, and it has a lot to do with the backers. That time it was Tisdale. The, the offensive line not able to get up to that second level. The linebackers have been freed up. And Jay Dixon in the game, but he's slinging it far side to Rodgers, who gets a block, and it's a first down inside the 40. Right, Murray Rodgers really just built like a tailback. 5'10", 210 pounds, worked so hard through the pandemic. Well, I remember watching a lot of videos of him on, on Instagram, and I don't know if a day went by where he wasn't maximizing every opportunity to try to get better in some way. It's paid off for him. Prepares like a pro. It's Dixon breaking tackles and banging around, spun down finally inside the Hokies 20 by Taylor. It's nice to see him get a chance. You know, he's been relatively quiet in 2020. Coming into the night, I know ETN's done most of the work, but only about 133 yards on the season coming in. So coming in at the right time to spell Travis Etienne and get some good solid yards. The yeah, only 3.6 per carry. It has been a quiet year for the backup tailback. He's got it again. He's got a crease again. Makes a cut, spins, fights, and scores. Back to back big plays by Lynn J. Dixon, and the Tigers are back on top. How about that? If you're a Clemson fan, you're like, I, I told you, I told you he could run. I told you he could run. I mean, Dixon, early in his career, really surprised people with his speed in the open field. You'd be so enamored by Travis Etienne. All of a sudden, Len J. Dixon would come in and say, where is this guy from? And he's been quiet. And now, last two carries, offensive line doing a better job of getting to those backers and gave him a nice, a nice crease there to make some moves. Yeah, back to back. 19-yard runs. The guy who's had a quiet season. It's been the most successful sequence on the ground so far for Clemson. Yeah, these backers have been making a lot of a lot of tackles, but this time they come down and they get picked up. Now you got Lynn J. Dixon that chance to make a move on a safety. He's running at full speed when Devin Taylor's trying to make a tackle. That's a tough thing to do. Watch this little move right there. That's a tough play and a tough tough thing to do for a safety in open space. So the Clemson offense has twice reacted very quickly. Once when falling behind and right there after the Hokies had tied the game at 10. So Tech a minute six to work with if they feel like getting aggressive here in all three timeouts. Going to have 
Chris Felica back with our AFLAF trivia question and answer. I'm going to, I did the math that worked. I think we're talking about 1992, which would mean Gino Toretto won the Heisman. Don't don't test me in the Heisman, Felica. And the <laughs> year that Dabo Sweeney and Alabama beat Upset Miami up. in the Superdome, an unforgettable night in New Orleans. I'm going to say the answer is Toretta and Alabama. It didn't have to be the same team and the same Heisman winner, I don't think. Well, I, I thought you guys would have a chance of getting tonight's Athletic Trivia question correct, and indeed you did. 93, of course, was the year it started, what you mentioned earlier, and then 1992, yes. How, how can we get scorn when we get it wrong, and then we get condescension when we get the answer I right? I noticed that. It I mean, it, it was condescension. I thought I'd give you a chance. When, when I give you your difficult question. Herbert, a nice looking kick up for two. We have to officially slide the desk back in and, and pay this off, Chris. Of course, the uh, the Athletic Trivia question tonight, the last time Virginia Tech missed a bowl game, who was the national champion and who won the Heisman Trophy? And as we said, 1992, Alabama Crimson tied where your national champion and Miami Hurricane quarterback Gino Toretta won the Heisman yeah, Trophy. Yeah, and there was a painful one for you to include as a graduate of the U. But I was there. Dabo's connection, I was there too. How about that Alabama defense that year? George Teague caught up to Lamar Thomas, took the ball. That pass rush was nasty, though. <laughs> Herbert, Eric Curry. So that, they're not looking to press the ball down the field, at least not on first down, final minute. Eric Curry, now. John Cope, oh. Lemansky Hall, who's over here coaching with Dabo. That was a great defense. Capital One halftime report coming up. Kevin, Mark, and Booger update the scores and highlights. Miami, speaking of the Hurricanes, and early lead over Duke. They're interested tonight. They're hoping against hope that maybe the Hokies could shock the world, give Clemson a second ACC loss. That would open things up for Miami and have to win that game and then beat Carolina and to be the Hurricanes yep. and Notre Dame in Charlotte. And a big story, James Skowski played tonight just in the first series and has been on the sidelines next to Brent Venables the rest of the first half. Herbert breaks free. In the clear, hold your breath, Clemson fans. And now perhaps they'll get a little more urgent, but they got two seconds to throw it to the end zone. You wonder why they didn't try to make, make more out of this. They had the, all the timeouts. By the way, I, now you really kind of understand what Justin Fuente is saying when he says, we, we, we knew he was a good back, but we didn't realize he had that kind of acceleration. Boy, that, that he can take off if you give him a little bit of room. Yeah, I, again, the, you, they had an opportunity there to sort of sort of press it. And and make something instead of a couple of runs. Huh, they can they can hail Mary. Halftime. Kevin will give you the update and how that that game finished between what were they calling it? The Mormons against the Mullets at game day. That was a pretty uh, funny sign. Yeah, <laughs> Chanticleers against the Cougars. What a what a. Uh, we thought that might be a, a good game. The willingness of the two the two schools and ads to put that game together. Last minute, we've seen that happen a lot in the Pac-12 and may see it happening more and more, even when though there's only two weeks to go. Well, that's coming up in two seconds. Three receivers to the right. And now four for Burmeister as he tries to keep it to the end zone. Does have the wind in his back. Will be able to set his feet. Yes, barely. Launches into traffic, and it is caught! Off the carom, but is he in? Off the carom, the catch was made, but not getting into the end zone, and that's where the first half will end. Blackshear, as it bounced off a Tiger defender, but he could not get it across the plane. Kendrick, instead of knocking it down, he tries to go for the interception, and the ball comes out of his hands because of Hodge behind him. Hodge looks like another ball just came out, and there's Blackshear waiting on it. He tries to extend, but clearly great angle right there. It's short by about half a yard. I think if you'd realize how close maybe you reach the ball, you take a chance right there. He kept it clutched to his body and just yeah. able to muscle him out as Kendrick kind of making up for the mistake. The Hokies that close to tying it at halftime. That's a great example for defensive backs all over the country. Why? I know you want the stat. I know you want the interception. Just bat the ball down. Do not keep that ball alive the way he did right there. And Blackshear came so close to making him pay for it. Both teams had to wait on the field. It's the Tigers who are happy. The Hokies, a missed opportunity. They, they play a strong first half, find themselves down by a touchdown. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Runner stopped short of the goal line. Thank you.
you, Jeff. So it is 17-10 Clemson at the break. And Kevin Nagandi, Mark Sanchez, Blue Brick Farland, the Capital One halftime report coming up. Oh, frantic finish of the first half. The Hokies hanging in there, but it's the Tigers on top by a touchdown. Kevin? And welcome back. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Capital One. This presentation of the ACC on ESPN. Clemson coming in needing a victory to secure their spot in the ACC championship game. Lead by seven against Virginia Tech. And welcome back, Chris Fowler, Kirk Street, and Maria Taylor. Hokies game plan, control the clock. Almost a two-to-one edge and a chance there to perhaps tie, come up about a foot short before halftime on the carom. But I think a team that has lost three in a row coming into this game, if you would have told Justin Fuente that, hey, you got a shot to be within a possession going into this second half, he would say he would take it. He's got to be proud of the way his team has fought, really on both sides of the ball against a very, very talented uh, Clemson football team. By the way, James Skalski, the defensive quarterback, the middle linebacker, comes out of halftime in civilian clothes. He played just the opening series. No clarification, but he did have that sports hernia injury that's cost him three games, came back last week, and is now on the sidelines for the second half. A concern, even with the week off before the rematch against Notre Dame. Our Pacific Life game summary. Off the bench comes Braxton Burmeister and lights up the Hokie offense. Yeah, he's done a nice job coming in. He's really played in rhythm. They've had a nice balance. We, we've seen Khalil Herbert get loose and make some plays, but Clemson was able to settle in, make enough plays. They haven't had the ball in a lot. Dabo Sweeney mentioned that to Maria Taylor. They've only, they've only had 26 snaps in the first half, and they came up with 17 points and fortunate to be up uh, in this game at this point. ETN and a Clemson offense that had back-to-back 400-yard -back passing games for the first time in school history. We are going to against Notre Dame and Lawrence against Pittsburgh held under 100 passing yards in the first half. And remember, that, that can switch in the blink of an eye. Yeah, they, they get some one-on-one -on -one opportunities. They're going to try to capitalize and make plays downfield. It's an area that Trevor Lawrence would love to see really improve on the year, getting the ball thrown downfield. Keeps it again, and they chase him down right near the line of scrimmage. That was Amari Barno, the speedy defensive end. Barno has good speed. He's actually lined up here. He collapses down, but look at the recovery speed. He's an outside linebacker. They moved to defensive end. He's 6'6", 235 pounds. But just like Trevor Lawrence, covers serious ground with those long legs. They call him a warrior for his effort. It's a high praise from a coach. And it creates a third and nine, a chance for the Hokies to get the Tigers off the field here. Clemson. One of three, first half on third down. Chris, he's also their best pass rusher coming to the blind side. Maybe why they move the back over. They get the snap with three in the play clock and throw it in the flat to Powell. Can he make three men miss? He cannot. He is corralled for a loss. Jared Hewitt, the nose tackle, is out there in space making the play. And it's fourth down. A really good job. Of show, how about the athletic ability? You, you know, say that again. You got a nose guard running out, making plays. You got a linebacker in Holyfield. But what the plan was there is don't play man, play zone, keep it in front of you, make him dump that down, and then rally to the ball. It's exactly what they're able to do there on third down. So James Mitchell, the tight end, taking a turn as a punt returner, had a nice return in the first half. Won't get a chance here because it's a bad kick. Spire is a reliable punter, not one of his best. Maria. Well, Chris, you guys have mentioned Braxton Burmeister, and how about this? Justin Fuente said he was only coming in for a series just to give Hooker a little bit of a breather, but he performed so well that he continued with them. As for that defense, he says, we know that Clemson's going to be explosive, but we got to find ways to get them off the field. I have heard Justin Hamilton, their defensive coordinator, telling the defense repeatedly, no one will play harder than us. Just stay disciplined. How about that, Marie? You, you come in for an audition. You think it's going to be kind of a bit part. You end up knocking it out of the park and a chance to play a, perhaps a starring role tonight for the Hokies here. Herbers have been busy, bangs off a tackler and falls forward for about four. Take a look at the Taco Bell Live Moss moment. The close call from Blackshear off the carom of Kendrick. He throws this Hail Mary into the half and Kendrick, instead of knocking it down, goes for the interception and right into the hands of Six, who's but waiting the right ball, there. Reach the ball for the <laughs> plain young man. If he only knew where he was. Oh, but less than half a yard from the goal line. 
It was all, almost a, a touch right. of like resignation when he was knocked out of bounds there at the one. Look at look at how they're taking their time. They they're waiting till 15 seconds on the on the game on the play clock till they break the huddle. In motion, two tight ends around. The Tigers are chasing and adjusting, and not quite set at the snap, but they fill very quickly. And that's Miles Murphy. Is that a big game along with Specter? Third down coming up. Boy, Miles Murphy has a bright future and, and is showing what he can do as a as a freshman this year. They run away and look at that speed. You know, you, usually you run a split zone, maybe bring a tight end or an H back on the other side to take him away, or you don't expect a big defensive end at 275 pounds to be able to be able to chase down a, a running back like that. But uh, gives you an idea of what he can do. They do recruit pretty well, don't they? And these guys have gotten a chance to play a lot. These young players because of the. Guys out when they comes to defense on third and six. It's a screen and Herbert's not going to be able to fight free. Gets just a yard. Nolan Turner, the safety leader back there, corralling him. Turner, Turner does a good job of just eyeing it. Really a good job on Brent Venables dialing this up. A lot of movement. Nolan Turner's right here, but once he sees that motion, he has an idea that where they're going to go with that ball, and he's able to sniff that out didn't have really a chance if he doesn't if he's not there and making that play he got three offensive linemen against two other defenders so good job good heads up play by Turner so good field position for the Hokies they can't cash in three and out Bradburn a low snap just gets it away was it partially blocked it's going to be now returnable and Clemson came after him the low snap messed up the timing Elijah Turner eventually got the football and Clemson will begin in plus territory. The Aussie had to improvise there, nearly a disaster as it is. Clemson trying to build in a seven point lead on the Hokies 48 when you come back. And Ian Book will join us from South Bend. Ten yard punt, but Bradburn actually did well to avoid getting it blocked as it is. Tigers in plus territory trying to add to a seven point lead. Second possession of the second half. And it's Etienne who's muscled back by Barno, starting to impose himself on the edge. A yard loss or two yard loss. Well, they run a counter away, and you just got to be careful doing that with the length and the speed of Barno. And nobody picks him up, and it's pretty easy play for him, as talented as Etienne is. As soon as he got the ball in his hands, he had 38 to deal with. Manuel Belmar out tonight, so it's Barno and Justice Reed. We're both very good. Going the distance at defensive end. There's a throw and a catch on the perimeter. Powell has gotten loose. Hasn't made a huge impact yet tonight, but there's still time. I, I've been impressed by Virginia Tech's corners. They've been holding up on islands, playing man to man, and Powell and, and Rogers and company not able to get behind them. We've not seen any big plays with the ability to make Virginia Tech pay. You see those safeties cheating up. There you go. And they launched the ball into traffic there. Unable to come down with it was Brandon Spector, the younger, the two Spector brothers on the team. What a play by Murray, the junior. Didn't really know where the football was. Gets a little bit lost, but he reads the receivers. And when the receiver goes up for the ball, he went up for the ball and knocked the ball away. Perfect timing. That's what you got to do. The safeties are going to cheat up. You got to try to stretch the field and take some shots. Take it to ETN, flip it in the flat. Allen bounces off a man. Now he's knocked down at the 31. Talk about limiting the big plays. Hokie defense did a tremendous job in the loss to Miami. The Canes game winning touchdown was the first play of 20 plus yards. Before that, they had smothered Miami's big play offense. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, this style of defense, again, Justin Hamilton. The new defensive coordinator taking over for Bud Foster. I mean, he ideally, if he had experience in the back end, he would play that that aggressive quarters that Bud played for years and man free. And he's had to kind of pick his spots to do that tonight. They've rolled the dice a little bit more and playing aggressively. On third and six, they bring some pressure. Ball out, catch made, first down. Long throw, Inspector got it, and they're now inside the 25. And that's where the accuracy comes into play for, for Trevor Lawrence. It's third down, left hash, out cut, and you have a soft corner who's who's off at about 8 to 10 yards, and you're basically saying, okay, if you're that guy, can you make that throw? And Trevor Lawrence does make that throw to Spectre for the first down. 
They run some tempo here. Etienne. They fake it to him. Lawrence fake me out momentarily. Keeps it and gets down for about a five-yard gain. Again, he's doing a good job on that zone read. And, and not only did he read it right because the, the defensive end collapsed, he pulls it. And Alan Tisdale, they almost wanted him to pull it because they had 34 Tisdale right there to account for him. But he made Tisdale miss for more positive yards. Four-time Lawrence has run it tonight. Total of 29 yards and that touchdown. And this time it's Travis ahead. And it's right near the marker at the 11 yard line. The great things about just the threat of a quarterback pulling it is the defense has to be aware and it can give you a little bit of leverage. It gives you better blocking angles to get ETN freed up a little bit more in the middle. Again, those corners are out there on islands. Etienne powers ahead. He almost wondered if they take a shot on that third and short figure they might go for that's it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's what you think. And again, just to remind people, you're looking at Amari Rogers, who's a proven veteran, came back from an ACL. From last year, he came back, but he was just back a little early. Cornell Powell's been a guy that's been on the back burner for a, for a few years and has emerged. But you're without Nagata, Ladson, and Justin Ross. You're maybe your three best receivers. Etienne again takes the handoff and scoots down to the four-yard line. Kind of sending a message on this drive, right? A little old school trying to control the line of scrimmage and taking their time here. I mean, they, they, they started this drive right around midfield. Yeah, took over at the 48 after that 10-yard punt on the short hop snap, taking more than three and a half minutes to move it into scoring position. And the whistle was a clap by Lawrence before the snap. Right to snap. Receiver. Ball start. Offense, number 17. Five-yard penalty. Second down. It was Powell, not the desired result of that hard clap, which can draw defenses off frequently. He just flinched up top just a little bit. Corner's like, hey, hey right there. Help me. Can't do much up there. Receiver in frozen position, so that moves it back now. Second and goal back from the nine. ETN in the heavy traffic. Would Lawrence have been better served keeping that one? There was nowhere for Travis. Well, they, 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 they did a good job of making him hand it, and then they were they were just kind of slanting the defensive line towards the field. There's just nowhere to go. ETN showed as much patience as he could, just kind of waiting to knife through and find a crease. But again, this defense holding their own. Love how they undersized group slanting and angling and, and taking some chances, which you have to when you don't have those behemoths in the inside. Now, where will Lawrence find the matchup he likes here on third and goal? Two tight ends in the game. Well, the, the hands of Amari Rogers down here are always reliable. Slot right is Rogers. Lawrence looking across the middle and throws an interception right into the hands of Diablo. And he just puts a knee down as the Hokies get an enormous defensive stand to stay within seven. A mistake by Lawrence, a rarity. Diablo is starting his 34th game. Watch him read the eyes. He comes out of his position. He's supposed to be here, but instead he looks at Trevor Lawrence, takes a chance, comes over, and helps out. He's not supposed to be there. Remember when Ed Reed used to make plays like that? Troy Palomalo do things that you wouldn't expect him to do? That's what he did. It made a huge play for the Hokies. Just tell Siri, show me college football rankings. Capital One bringing you the CFP rankings, which were unchanged after week one. So far, none of the teams have lost that are in that top seven. But Clemson still in a battle here. Seven point game. Alabama as bad as they want it to be. Over LSU tonight, pretty much. They fake it to Herbert. Burmeister on the run, and it's broken up. A couple of flags fly in the offensive line area. It's two down. Jeff Heaser hasn't been terribly busy tonight. Just one penalty on each team before this. Personal foul. 
Shot block, offense, number 76 and 60. Penalty is half the distance to go. First down. Hoffman and Zanzi combine. That'll set them back to yeah. the 10-yard line. Push, for, push Virginia Tech back. Diablo's here. Galloway works here. What, what's impressive here again is how Diablo just kind of senses this. He feels it. He reads the eyes, comes out of his spot, and makes the interception. Trevor Lawrence never even felt him. He was reading to his left. He saw Galloway break free. He's thinking touchdown, and that's a great angle. 17 jumps out out of nowhere, comes up with a critical interception right now in a one-possession game. They call Diablo a coach on the field. That's how savvy he is. And up in the round here. And it falls out. Ball came loose. Clemson recovers at the 13-yard line. Mario Goodrich fell on the football. And a crushing turnover. Yeah, I, I, I think Miles Murphy, when he made contact with him, knocked the ball loose. 98 right there. See his hand on the ball. See if he rips it out. Yep, knocks it out right there before the knee touches. It's on the ground. And now you got Clemson all over that. The corner, Mario Goodrich, gets on top, as he said. Now Clemson, after the interception, they get a turnover of their own, and they get the ball right back in, in the red zone. Thank goodness. Of Diablo, who made a crucial saving play, and now the defense is under pressure again. Tigers from the 13. Lawrence has still got it. Gets a block on the edge. Just shoving people out of the way is Galloway. And a nice gain. But they have been running this play a lot. And Virginia Tech continues to give Trevor Lawrence to keep Reed. And he's happy to do that. He carries. He's up to about six carries now on the night. Thought he may have carried it a little bit more than that. But they've run that zone read quite a bit. Haven't been scrambles. They've been design runs tonight. Yeah. Got it again, and he's going to score for a second time as a runner. Trevor Lawrence keeps it and barrels in, and the Tigers stretch the lead to two touchdowns. Chris, watch how long he stays on the ride. Reading out here, and because he's long on that ride, it gives him more time to get an idea, an indicator of whether or not they're collapsing down. It's the progressive pylon cam where he easily gets into the end zone but a nice long ride there allowed him to make that read in the way the Tigers block on the edge the tight ends and receivers in that case now springing Lawrence He's had an effective night as a runner reaching the end zone twice even though he hasn't yet thrown a touchdown pass and did have the pick 24 10 the defending ACC champs closing in and then return trip to Charlotte All right, Kevin, thank you. A crushing sequence there after Diablo makes the pick. The fumble quickly cashed in by Clemson. Looks like the Tigers are closing in on Charlotte. And a rematch to one of the games of the season. The Fighting Irish beating Syracuse at home to make it 10-0. They have a week off. And Ian Book, Irish quarterback, kind enough to join us tonight. Part fan, part scout, I guess, Ian. Congratulations, first of all. Win number 30. As Notre Dame's quarterback, that is an all-time record that you're going to be able to savor for, for decades to come. No, thank you very much. Okay, he's trying to make something happen. You can't really chew the clock when you're down two scores. Ian, what's the reaction now? You, you know that uh, Clemson's been talking about you guys, and now both teams will have kind of a bye week, two weeks to build up and prepare and get fresh before that collision in Charlotte. Yeah, looking forward to it. Just... Uh, Another matchup against a really good team. It's going to be fun, and, um, you know, our team's ready. We're getting ready for that. And, again, just excited. It's just another great opportunity for our team. Are you going to have perhaps some different faces on defense when you face them that we're not in South Bend, although Skowski is out of the game tonight. We've spoken, and I know you, you frame the challenge is going to be a harder mountain to climb than it was the first time in South Bend for you guys. Oh, yeah. We know they got some guys, you know, that didn't play us the first time. That'll be back. Uh, we just got to do what we got to do and focus on, um, you know, our side of the ball and, and just take care of ourselves and uh, just excited to get to preparation and just get ready to, you know, go to work and 
again, have another exciting matchup against Clemson. Ian, you obviously been a quarterback in South Bend for a long time and, and have played on some teams who I'm sure you, you love. This year's team seems to have not just you and the playmaking ability, just when we watch, it's like an edge, just a little bit of streak of nastiness to them. That's the outside looking in. What, what do you feel is a little bit unique or different about this team? Yeah, I think it just started, you know, when, when COVID first hit. This team's just got a lot of grit. You know, we didn't even know if we were going to play. And, uh, you know, this team just never shied away. And uh, everyone was putting in the work and just hoping that we, were be, that we would be able to play. And, uh, you know, we have been. And we've been making the most of it. And it's just a fun team to play with. A lot of grit and never shying away. And just so much fun out there on the field. You know, everyone's laughing, having a good time. Just exciting to be out there with them. It's Bentley on the sack there, and the Hokies will have to punt it back to Clemson. Rodgers retreats and will make a fair catch at the 30. So, Ian, you, you played earlier. There's games on. On a typical Saturday, are you a, I know you're busy maybe with family. Uh, but are you a college football fan? Do you like kicking back and watching like Trevor or other quarterbacks or other teams play? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. You know, w once our game's over, you know, all I do is go home and, and just watch more college football. And uh, it's fun to watch Trevor and Clemson and just got done watching the BYU game and um, just watching everybody play. It's fun. And. You know, it's motivating as well to watch other quarterbacks and, and see how they're doing. I tell you what, people are watching you when you're in the field because I don't know if anybody is more fun to watch or, or apparently having more fun. We've seen all season long the improvisational skills as Lawrence throws it away there. But, I mean, the Carolina game, the scrambles, the, the sideways flips, I mean, it's, it's part Baker Mayfield, it's part Johnny Manziel. I mean, I, do you realize when you're in the heat of the moment how much fun that is to watch for the rest of us? Well, I'm, I'm definitely having fun, you know, while I'm out there. And I definitely don't want to do that flip, you know, too often. So, <laughs> but it, it was fun and, and it worked out. But, you know, it's just kind of how I play. And I just want to, you know, keep moving the offense. I just want to keep getting first downs and, and keep spreading the ball around to all of our playmakers. And just want to do that, you ball know, start. however I can. Offense number 65. Five yard penalty. Second down. So I'm going to ask you a tough question. You watch a lot of college yeah. football. They ask us always to rank all these teams. Wh who are your top four teams right now? Oh, man. Um, Where's Notre Dame? Probably what they have. Yeah, I'm putting us in there. You know, probably the four that they have right now. Uh, you know, I haven't been able to watch all those teams, you know, that much. But uh, I think the four that they have right now is, is pretty good pick. And we just got to keep working. And we want to stay in that top four. And we got a, we got a goal to win a national championship. And we just got to keep working out at that. So Burmeister head to the locker room. That's a concern. Now, Ian, Nick Saban, who's been in this position a lot, calls it rat poison. You know what's going to be said. Notre Dame doesn't even need to win the game. You're already in the playoff. You've done enough. Even if Clemson gets you, you're going to be in that bracket. That's very dangerous. And I know you guys want to banish those thoughts, even though there is some validity to it. Oh, yeah, it, 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 it's dangerous, but, you know, this team, nobody's said anything like that. Um, we want to play Clemson again. Uh, it'd be a fun rematch, and we want to win. You know, we just joined a conference. We want, to, we want to win that ACC championship. You know, we've been talking about that since, you know, we got back together. That was Lawrence throwing the ball backwards. They spotted it like it was a, a lateral, and now it's a fourth down punt coming up for the Tigers. Surprised that they, that they spotted that. I thought that that was... Or lateral, I thought that might have been forward by maybe a yard or two, but but uh, you got to give Justin Hamilton a lot of credit for being aggressive here. What the heck? What do they have to lose? Down a couple scores, brought Ashby on the blitz along with the nickel. Connor got to him fast. Yeah, they're going to take a look at this. Let's see from the where the ball is about the 17 and a half yard line, and it's uh, it was right along. The line of scrimmage. If it was backwards, it was a couple inches backwards. We have Bill Lamagne been on a cold night. We have to get a rep here in Blacksburg. Rolling on the field is a Whit backward pass. That play is under further review. Clemson will not be charged a timeout. The ruling on the field was a backward pass. Looking at that there, that looked like it was forward by about a quarter of a yard or so. Yeah. So I think replays, I won't say I think, replays should reverse this to an incomplete pass and put it at the previous spot. So are we looking at his hand where the ball is being released as far as where we're trying to 
track it. The release where... point, the touch point. T- okay. take, take another look, Bill. The ball is, uh, I don't know, closer to the 18 than the 17. Well, mm. that angle there the, from the release point, I think you're right. You're, you're right on that, Chris. They're going to probably let this stand. I think it's because his body is falling back. It makes it feel like it's definitely forward. But if you're going by release point to where it release where it, point to yeah. touch point. To touch, yeah. I mean, the only difference is that, you know, a few yards. They're still punting. March back. They're going to punt the ball anyway. Yeah. It's fourth down. And let's hope this has not become one of those marathon ACC booth reviews. Tom DeJoseph is the replay official here. They can take their time in this conference. And this was not a, a terribly crucial play other than for the stat sheet, let me say. Ian, are you still there? I, I wanted to get your impression. You I'm watch other quarterbacks, you say, and you take a look, obviously, at Trevor Lawrence, who was a spectator when you guys met in South Bend. What's what's your quarterback-to-quarterback assessment of number 16? Yeah, obviously, uh, he's really good. After further uh, review, I was able to meet him um, at the uh, Manning Passing Academy a few years ago, and uh, he's just a really good quarterback, and uh, he's a good kid, and excited that he'll be playing when we play them next, and uh, he's fun to watch for sure. You guys are both fun to watch. It's going to be so many great individual matchups in that game. And you, know, you said it, it's, it's a rare opportunity. Notre Dame's done a lot of things in football, but winning a conference championship and dethroning a perennial conference champion would rank right there. We appreciate your time, yeah. man. We'll, we'll talk to you as the game approaches. We'll be excited to see you guys on the field with the Tigers, apparently in Charlotte. Ian, thanks for your time tonight. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you guys for having me. And that's another crazy punt. Aspires has had an awkward night, Kirk. He, he is just normally really reliable. That's off the side of the foot. They're going to spot the ball. They're still marching to the 32-yard line. Yard line. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very surprised. And I, I, you know, he's frustrated with himself. And now the Hokies get great field position here after, about a guy after catching a break there. 46 yards a punt. I mean, he's having a, a tremendous all-conference kind of season. You'll go back to Justin Fuente telling us, you know, hey, we got to flip the field with special teams. First thing he brought up was special teams. I thought we were talking to Frank Beamer, and he, be, he said because we've got to win field position. It's an opportunity for him. And he said they got to dominate special teams. There's Herbert. Again, his 16th carry tonight. He's, he's had to earn him his 80 yards, but five a carry. See Kane Patterson in there making another tackle. Kane Patterson in for Jake Venables, who was in for James Skowski. Uh, and, and again, I've told you earlier that Kane Patterson, tremendous upside. The young sophomore, very, very athletic out of Nashville, 6'1", about 225 pounds, can get sideline to sideline. But I think it's just a matter of getting reps and getting more and more familiar. And this is obviously helping with his maturation and his growth. Again, Hooker back. We told you Burmeister headed to the locker room. He fumbles his snap, coming in cold, and it's scooped up. Kendrick with a convoy. Can they chase him down? He gets to the end zone. A scoop and score for Clemson. 68 yards and a crushing turnover for the quarterback who came off the bench cold, hadn't played since the first series. Remember the first series, he struggled with a snap that was perfect. It was right to him, and he, for whatever reason, dropped the ball. Same thing happens here. Not sure what, what's going on. The snap is good. It's the backup center, Hoyt. He puts it there, and I, I, again, I think the only thing I can think of is he's peeking and looking at, at his read or looking up to the defense and not focusing on catching the ball. Wow. So Burmeister came on after that opening series. The play you alluded to sparked the offense, left the field to have an injury looked at. We don't know what it is at this point. Hooker probably thought his night was done, but he pops back in there, and it's it's been a a troubling night for him. Yeah, right. There's the miscue. That's the first first series, you know, and, and he's I, that one we caught him kind of looking up, trying to get a feel for what might be happening here this time. He's just not able to handle the ball. He tries to recover it. Gets hit, kept the ball free, and then Kendrick with the speed picks it up and takes it all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. Burmeister hurt himself on the fumble that Clemson recovered and, and cashed in a short time ago. You know, he, Hot potato on a cold night. And, well, he, not just cold, he's been so reliable. You know, and, and j- once he was able to come back from not playing early in the year, they built their offense around him. He's their guy. You know, he's their go-to guy.
He looks like he's in pain here. Remember Quincy Patterson, who was their their third quarterback, entered the transfer portal this week. He was a guy they would bring in, a, a big 240-pound guy. They would use in wildcat situations. Been around here for a few years, and he's transferred in search of playing time, so he's not available tonight. And something to keep an eye on with Rittermeister off the field and Hooker looking not right at the moment. Sunday NFL countdown. Seattle superstars Russell Wilson and Sue Bird sit down for an interview. And on Monday Night Football, and Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, and Lewis Riddick, Buffalo takes on the Niners in Glendale as they have to shift from the Bay Area. 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and on the ABC app. I mean, this is how it happens against Clemson. You're, you're competing. You're, 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 you know, you're right there within a possession. And all of a sudden, a couple scores later, you're down 31-10. Off inside. It knocks Kadem, number 12, in a quarterback. Now, here's what happened to Burmeister. That, that fumble, his knee twisted at an awkward angle there. I don't know if that's the source of it. Lost the football. That was a sack there where he was still trying to, to be in the game. But, yeah, a little bit of an awkward twist there. But we have, you know, you, you mentioned Patterson, or Patterson no longer with the team. So you've got Knox Kadem right now who steps in. He could not have expected to play tonight. Remember, he's fourth string until this week. <laughs> Suddenly in there in the three touchdown deficit. Kadem is going to keep it, and he's going to fall for a first down out near the 37. Hokey Bench still showing some life and some spirit. It, it, nice to see for a team that had lost three in a row coming in is now down three scores. No doubt about it. He's 6'3", 185-pound redshirt freshman out of out of the Georgia, out of Georgia, and you can show you he's an athlete. I think it's what Justin Puente always looks for in his quarterbacks. He loves the dual guy, a guy who can throw it, but especially has to have the ability to run it. They're still sticking to their guns, working, working that clock. Hooker joining Burmeister. Imagine Braxton's surprise when he sees his fellow quarterback joining him in that training room. So the seconds run out on the third quarter as the third stringer holds up four fingers. 21 point lead for Clemson back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Half a hundred almost at halftime. Look out. Not letting up after last year. No, don't expect a lot of throttling back if that LSU celebrated Tuscaloosa. So Max Kadem, his first snaps of the season, won a couple of state titles at Rome, Georgia High School, but did not expect to see action tonight. No, I mean, it, you know, if you if you went back and there's Burmeister who's back from the locker room doesn't look like he's potentially available at this point but uh, if you think back where Kata might have been three or four or five weeks ago and now here he is out. how about like four or five days ago <laughs> right. before Patterson enters the transfer portal he's yeah. fourth string if he could, no way how many reps has this guy probably got run, probably running scout with team. the starters no doubt now he's going against Clemson Herbert Nowhere to run to the right. Cuts back and will lose a yard. Hemmed in by Xavier Thomas and Turner. A flag is out. Illegal shift. Offense, two men in motion at the same time. That penalty is declined. Third down. Well, during these challenging times, ESPN and the V Foundation, the fight against cancer has not stopped. If you're able, Please support cancer research by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of what you give goes to cancer research. Late colleague Stuart Scott, one of his foundations, is being overseen by his two daughters, part of the fight. Third and six. Gaden won a screen. Catch made and fighting for yardage is Robinson. And they will move the sticks out near midfield. It's going to feel pretty good for this young quarterback who never expected to see snaps at all this season. Will still be given a redshirt year, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he looks pretty well prepared for a guy that, you know, thought probably wouldn't have a chance of getting on the field. So give him credit in his preparation. But I, I, I really love to see Robinson make some effort there after the catch. I didn't think he had a chance to get to that first down, but gets there. And up to Herbert, who's gone over a thousand yards in his one and only senior 
season in Blacksburg. And he's approaching 100 yards tonight. 93 now. This continues to be a good battle in the trenches. That time, Luke Tenuta, who's the son of John Tenuta, who was a, just a big time defensive mind for years and still is, still working with Cincinnati. His son there with a, an outstanding block on the right side. Opening things up pretty good. I mean, you know. You're going to either get a short pass or a run. They're, they're loading up near the line of scrimmage, and they're still finding ways to get some yards. Some backups in there for the Tigers' defense. Herbert navigates through heavy traffic, and as you said, continues to fight. Sets up a third and two. Mike Jones Jr. tackled him. And we were just talking with Ian Book about uh, taking on this Clemson team in a couple weeks in Charlotte. Skowski. We'll have to see. Hopefully he's going to be OK. He had that sports hernia that kept him out for a number of games. But uh, we're seeing Tyler Davis fight through some some uncomfort or discomfort. He clearly is not at 100 percent. Mike Jones, also another guy that's been dealing with some injuries, has not been able to be at 100 percent. Great to see six out there on the field playing the entire game. Zanon or uh, Landon Zanders, the safety. And able to go yeah. again. Tatum carrying all the way runs right into the teeth of that Tigers pursuit and they knock him down for a loss. Jones and A.J. Henry is fourth down. And, and that's an example of what Mike Jones brings. You, you know you lose Isaiah Simmons and that's the position. I mean that's that's the spot where you'd like to see him get to the edge get off of blocks use your hands and set the edge. That, that was beautiful. You know right there and he's a guy that brings experience the only guys that started last year that it returned are, are Tyler Davis James Skowski Nolan Turner and Kendrick I mean so a lot of new faces on this defense and yeah, Davis missed five games on fourth down Tatum tries to make a play rolls in the direction that he's got three receivers escapes the rush for now and not for long. He'll be knocked down, sacked on fourth down, chased down by Avante Bentley. Nice to see both these younger linebackers. Kane Patterson actually forces him out. Watch these backers fly on fourth down. 17 right there, almost comes up with it. And then Bentley finishes it off right there. Tigers take over, 11.06 to go. <laughs> 250 souls witnessing this game tonight. Coverage from above brought to you by Goodyear. To reach the end zone, all you need is drive. Goodyear, more driven. Lynn J. Dixon is the back behind Lawrence. And the Tigers take over at midfield. And Trevor looking to throw, takes a big shot, delivers a downfield ball, and it is dropped. A flag comes out. Powell hit in stride, could have walked in. But there is a flag in the secondary. Hold I wonder field. if Powell may be pushed off to get separation. Near the end of that Pass route. Affairs, offense, number 17, 15-yard penalty. Good know. spot. He's got long arms and used one of them there. Yeah, I don't know if that was in the back of his mind. You can see a little bit of hand jostling, and then at the end, a little push right there. Tough to see from that angle, but he, he clearly pushed to get that separation and then ends up just dropping a ball. You know, that's an area that Clemson wants to keep getting better is their vertical passing game. Without Ross this year, Ladson and Ngata, the longer receivers that can get downfield, they haven't been available much. Powell's been that guy. A Joe's another guy. He's in now 11 who can become a vertical threat. But down the road, they're going to need to hit those. Yeah, good point. Got to be able to stretch the defense vertically. Powell has been... Uh, a really a testament to a career role player kind of waiting behind other talented guys but now that he's the guy has worked hard the light has come on and he's played exceptionally well the Nissan Heisman watch numbers are updated for Trask and Fields in their victories Mac Jones having a big night how do you sort of rate this unusual Heisman I, race? I guy playing different numbers of games you're going to go with the best player and and uh, are you going to go with the best year that's what you're going to have to figure out as a voter. Another downfield shot is Powell again. This time, no interference, no drop. Touchdown, Tigers, as they do plunge the knife in to the Hokies That's with a deep there. shot. And Powell, after a quiet start, makes an electric play deep in the fourth quarter. Well, we just talked about you got to make people pay. If, look, at, look at this. Look at the boxed area. You have the safeties up tight. You get one-on-one -on -one at the top. A guy like Trevor Lawrence with Cornell Powell has got to make him pay for that. It's basically, can you win? 
can you get can you get uh, behind the corner and can a quarterback put the ball on the money? And when you got Trevor Lawrence, you've got to be able to do that. And teams have done that this year. They're loading up against the threat of this Clemson running game. And Clemson this year has made them pay for it more often than not. It's a 65-yard touchdown. So Powell now four catches for 90 yards, trying for a fourth consecutive 100-yard game. No Tiger receiver has ever done that. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. Pretty creative with the cardboard cutouts. The Corso front row seat with some of the guys from Metallica just over to Lee's right there. Tuesday night, the college football playoff top 25 show. Kirk, Reese, and the gang presented by AT&T 5G. Exclusive reveals of the rankings. That we, we can Bernie's wake him up. See what the T-shirt. Remember the T-shirt. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know what a hokey is, but God is one of them. Four touchdown margin now. The All-State bus was here. Kirk, what's your All-State protection spotlight? Well, you know, I think that it's important to be able to recognize quarterbacks that make this kind of effort downfield. Trey Sermon is doing his job, but look at the quarterback, Justin Fields. Look how many yards he goes to help out. I said in the open, that kind of effort from a quarterback is more impressive than throwing for five touchdown passes. That's how you win your team over. Great effort by Fields to help out even though he's probably going to score it's more about what that represents no doubt hand off to jalen holston well the game plan hasn't changed just still gonna grind the ground game and work the clock here that was effective for a while and that's the last guy they want to see down christian derisaw their best offensive line one of the best tackles in the country who left the pittsburgh game last time is down and we'll take a break while they help the big fella we hope to his feet. These two schools will meet in basketball 10 days right down the road Castle Coliseum on the ACC network undefeated on the young seas. Nokies have a ranking of number 16. Second and seven off the timeout. There is uh, help to the sidelines there. Star left tackle. To get the report after the game is Caden keeps and scoots for a first down across the 45. Very important game for Virginia Tech here next week against the Cavaliers. They're in state rival that they've dominated over the years, Kirk, but they lost last year. So the health of Burmeister and Hooker and Darissa going forward is, is a crucial aspect of that game. They are dialed in trying to reclaim the Commonwealth Cup from the Cavaliers. Yeah, and, it, you know, a rivalry like that, not only that day, but it impacts the overall vibe of your program and, and recruiting, most importantly. I like to look Cicada. I know he's a young guy, but he's, he's an athletic guy. He can run that. He can run the ball. And, you know, for a guy that hasn't had many reps with the ones in practice, you know, he, he's come in here and doesn't seem to be overwhelmed at all by by going up against Clemson. One of those guys that when you've won as many games as he did, I think he won 47 games in high school, a couple state championships, as we said. You know, you, yes, the competition is daunting. The level is completely different. But I think you have in your head, right, that I'm supposed to have sure. success when I come in. Yeah, absolutely. That throw wasn't one of his finest. And now he's pressured, immediately dumps it down. And there's a big play on the sidelines. And... Holston still going. Thought he was going to get knocked out of bounds. Stayed alive and is knocked out inside the 10-yard line. That's some good blocking downfield. And the lineman does their job. And how about Kadem waiting to the last possible second until he got rid of this football? You know, it, it, he stayed in bounds all the way until the very end of this play when he finally gets pushed out by Nolan Turner. Looks like Clemson maybe called a timeout trying to get some players shuffled in but I was how about Kadem not oh, Kadem that play I, I thought he might get I thought he might get sacked he gets it off and I, I don't know why Holston doesn't get more opportunities I know Herbert is a great back but you know, he he runs hard 215 pounds yeah I think he I think, I think the heels heel in the air the yeah it's, it's in the air it didn't touch 
Yeah, the ball of the foot is in bounds. I don't think the yeah. back of that cleat touched the white. It's it's tough to say for sure. Again, they'd have to see evidence for sure that it did touch down. I, I don't see any movement of grass at all. I don't I think that was in the air. But you're right. I mean, it looked like he was going to get sacked. He got the ball Not off and Holston a, a tremendous effort. Picking up 47 yards. You see him against Miami, their Miami game. Yeah, he ran hard that game. Watch this. It looks like he's going down. It looks. It looked like Matt, um, Maskell had him brought down. Maskell had him brought down, but instead he gets it off and huge yards. They're going to let it let it stand. So first and goal, Holston in the game. They fake it, and Kaham takes a big shot, and earns a yard gain to the five. Bentley has been active tonight. He's one of the guys that's a reserve, but it reflects the the talent, the depth, of this Clemson defense. Yeah, he is a, a physical presence when he gets out there. Doesn't have quite the length that some of the other backers like Kane Patterson and Jake Venables when they come in for Skowski. Bentley will rotate in a lot of times in for Specter. From Birmingham, redshirt freshman. I'm not really sure what Jeff Heiser was saying. We couldn't hear it. They'll now wind the clock. So the play clock is reset. We're good to go. Holston's got the football and he's wrestled down. Lost the football. Still lose. It looks like the Tigers have recovered. Is that Pinkney at the bottom of the pile? Yeah, he had made the huge play on the catch to set him up. And Pinkney recovers it. It was forced by McGuire. Man, Keith McGuire read that quickly and made a physical play on the ball carrier. That's what knocked the ball loose. And Virginia Tech seems like they just cannot get out of their own way tonight with the with the mistakes. A lot of miscues have cost them tonight, especially when they've had opportunities to have game-changing possessions. This one, of course, is out of reach at this point, but another costly mistake. Yeah, the third fumble this half, Kirk, and you're right. The they've been when they're going in, a chance to score points or backed up, giving Clemson a very short field. Chesma Lucy, fresh legs, firing. And the former four-star recruit who hasn't had a whole lot of opportunities so far with the Tigers shows his speed. Yeah, I mean, again, a guy this year, much like we talked about with Dixon, only 23 carries on the season, but gives you an idea what he can do. I, if you're Travis Etienne, you're thinking, man, I mean, I, I can't find a crease all season. And Lynn J. Dixon and Malusi get in there, and they both get a, a chance. I think Travis really excited that he's back. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. As Lawrence still slinging it on play action down the sideline. Jump ball, and it's incomplete. Powell is battling Armani Chapman to defend it well and then chose to talk some noise afterwards. I never get that when you're down 38-10. I, never, I just don't understand it. Just play the game. Powell trying to get behind him. You know, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage again. Pretty good job by, by Chapman staying in phase that time. As soon as you saw the receiver, his arms go up. He swung the arm around to break it up. And second down. Malusi again off the left side. Picks up about seven or so. If ETN's night is done, he'll finish up with 66 yards rushing, Kirk, which means he's going to head to Charlotte with six consecutive games below 100 yards. You know he was held in check by the Irish under 30 well, yards in that game, so you know he's going to be inspired. No, Notre in Dame, match. like most teams, are going to load the line of scrimmage. When you do, you got to take shots downfield. We keep talking about that. And if you look at Trevor Lawrence this year, that, that's an area that I think in the Notre Dame game, I, I think that'll be a big key to that football game is can they get vertical and make plays in the passing game. Malusi tackle behind the line. Etienne was also not really used as a receiver tonight. Caught just one pass for one yard. Yeah and, and this this is what I'm talking about when it comes to the, the, the passing game. This is in the air. Look at the difference between passes that have been under 20 yards 76 percent versus passes downfield at 38 percent. So people look at that and they think, you know what, even though these receivers are great, and Trevor Lawrence is great, we'd rather load up and take our chances 
on the running game and on the short intermediate passing game and make them prove to us that they can hit those downfield passes. And I think that's what Notre Dame's approach will be. It's one thing to keep in mind that Justin Ross, who had that, that neck injury, has an appointment with the doctors December the 8th. So it's coming up. If he gets the good news and they give him clearance to continue his football career, it's possible that Justin Ross, who's been practicing and running around, could be out there for the ACC championship game. That game is 11 days after that appointment with the doctors. Remember how talented Ross is? You, you think back to the, the championship game against oh, yeah. Alabama, against the team from his home state. He's a huge difference maker. What you're talking about, stretching the field, Ross is built for that. So yeah. Clemson fans are excited. You've got to just wait and see the result of this this well, meeting with the doctors, but it's possible he can yeah. be out there against the Irish. Frank, Frank Ladson, number two, is another guy you think about. Joseph Ngata is an outstanding vertical threat. So all these guys, especially Frank Ladson, looks like he has a chance to come back, which only helps what we're talking about. Because if I'm Notre Dame, I, I'll take my chances. I, you know, much like what they did against North Carolina, you know, take your chances. You know, not, you're going to put corners on an island all night, but. When you look at those numbers, you want to make Lawrence have to throw the ball downfield. I think you're right that Ladson, they thought, had a chance, but with two more weeks rest, he, he appears to be about ready to return. And God, it would be more of a, a college football playoff return yep. if he can, if they can make the playoff. An instant classic. Game over! Number one. We plan on seeing Clemson again. I had the feeling that post game celebration in South Bend, that would be the first of two. And it's all but official now. The Irish securing their spot this afternoon, beating Syracuse. They're in there 10 and 0. And Clemson just five and a half minutes away from joining them at 9 and 1. How about Keith McGuire, man? He comes in again. Watch this play. I, I mean, I know that we're at this point, the game's wrapped up. But when you're Brent Venables, we get maybe a shot of Brent Venables on the sideline. He's Again, he's a defensive coach. At any point in the game, it doesn't matter who's in the game. doesn't matter what the score is. Again, his brain, it's it's first series. And, and these players feed off of that energy. And they're going to play to the last whistle. Honestly, that's what you respect about Clemson. Watch my man. He's going to make a tackle on the right here. Well, everybody on the three deep, every single Clemson defensive player on the three deep that they brought here has now played in this football game. Yeah, and, and again, he and especially Dabo sets a tone of, hey, guys are going to work in practice, and when they work in practice, we're going to play them. And when you play guys, you're going to get better energy in practice and just overall in the, around the facility, and, and guys are going to care because they know that they're going to get an opportunity to play. I think it's a really good approach and, and Brent like I said how do you not want to play for this guy no good points I think it, it has to be said that they're third string guys could start for a lot of teams too so it's not like when you try it out the three deep you're, you're putting unathletic guys on the field Tatum just heaves it and it's incomplete <laughs> on the sidelines pretty I, pretty good chance a, there I'm not even watching it I'm watching him you see him on that one I think he tried to cover that <laughs> he tried to make the play on the ball <laughs> No, Blackshear was down there. He's still, he's still. Oh <laughs> Come on, Come on. You know what's crazy is that when he's not coaching, he's the most laid back, chill, great guy. But man, he gets, he gets a headset on, and it's it's game on. The switch gets flipped when the headset goes on. You're right. He's still angry in the punt. Bradburn for a cut at the 50 yard line. Our Pacific Life game summary takes a look at well some of the quarterbacks you've seen tonight because we've seen three for the Hokies here and I think uh, we're about to see Uyangalale come on for the Tigers. Lawrence finishes 12 of 22. The late touchdown pass to Powell through the pick had a couple touchdown runs and Burmeister came in on relief after the first series and left injured. Uyangalale is in the game. Obviously has had a big impact on his team as a true freshman. Of course, the two starts, the win against Boston College, the double OT loss Notre Dame when Lawrence was out. 400-yard game against the Irish, and boom, there he goes. Why not bring in Darian Renter and let him get a touch and a touchdown? 
First time he has the football in his hands. It's a house call for Renter, the senior from Anderson, South Carolina, just up the road from the campus. Look at the reaction from the team. I, mean, I think the entire team will go down to him. First uh, touchdown this year. First touchdown of the year. He had two last year. Last week, I thought he might score against Pitt, but uh, he is a, a beloved by his team and has been such an influence to these guys on so many different levels beyond just playing the game. He, you know, he's a, a third string back, but uh, he got the Disney Spirit Award this week, which is such a, a huge deal. So good for him to go into the end zone. He'll be honored at that ceremony, which is in January. This year, the Disney Spirit Award is recognizing Darian Richard as college football. Alright, so uh, Darren, really proud of him, man. Really proud of him. Uh, he was emotional there. That, that announcement caught him off guard. And this is a moment that uh, caught us off guard, too. Into the clear and all the way to the end zone. I, you talk about a lot of aspects, Kirk, of this Clemson program that you obviously know very well with your sons a part of the team. But what you just said there, the fact that the teammates reacted. Look at Scott. Yeah, he's I'm had a disappointing you. night, but he's yeah. over there with his fellow I, senior. I, I, I said to, to D-Mob and Bill when he scored, I said, keep the camera on because everybody in a white jersey is going to go down to that corner of the end zone to love on. I'm talking the trainers. Everybody loves Darian Rencher and what he has brought to this, this program throughout his career. Just Darian number 23 for number 21 and a that's a heck of a moment in the Disney Spirit Award. He will be honored, as I said, in January virtually this year, the ceremony that's usually held in Atlanta, but of course not in 2020. But that'll be another moment for him to share. I should even talk about his story. 45-10 now, 401 to play to Kevin Nagandi. Ouch. Trevor Lawrence over there to congratulate Runcher. What a moment for him. You know, the social justice issues that were all throughout this entire country. You saw a lot of players involved with uh, a lot of movements on these campuses. And I think none bigger than with Darian Rencher and, and what Trevor Lawrence and, and what the the players did. But it was led by his guidance and, and his leadership throughout those tough times for all of us and, and throughout the country. Cornell Powell, who's to his left, also one of the more outspoken guys with the Black Lives Matter movement. That's Dabo hugging on him and appreciates him more than anybody as the head coach. It's just a, a you know a guy that's a third string tailback that's selfless. I mean, when was the last time you saw someone score and ten minutes later, everyone's still hugging on him? That's a heck of a play. That was, that was a was. one yard play. <laughs> he got out. Run. <laughs> By the way, I, I don't know if it's fair to call Dabo Sweeney the king of the cold, Kirk, but he will move his record to nine and zero at Clemson. When the kickoff temperature is 45 degrees or less, as it was tonight, he, he was hoping he'd see some snow here. Yeah. A little disappointed because he's never coached or played in snow. Didn't quite get the precipitation he hoped for, but it, it, it does show you that all these southern teams, how they're going to handle the cold temperatures, they've handled it just fine with him. Well, I think it, in his case, he likes to challenge himself and especially his team. Everybody wants to know, you know, Clemson, warm weather team, how they're going to handle 30 degrees. Instead of being like, oh, I don't know, he's like, yeah, man, hope it snows. Like, he turns it into a positive. I took a picture of him on the monitor I, when I, we were here about an hour early. He came out for warm-ups. He's all bundled up, looked like the Michelin man. And I took a picture on the monitor, sent it to his phone. Like, look at the, look at the southern, southern boy up in the cold here. I mean, he's bundled up. He was all excited to get to wear that puppy jacket this week. Look. Tony Elliott was down there too wearing a big puffy jacket but his spot in the game was up here in the box. He, he didn't seem to be too disappointed about that. <laughs> Those fairs have been fairs making the catch from Kadem moments ago. And the handoff inside to Marco Lee as a lot of the backups are getting a chance to play here. Another reminder that tomorrow morning Russell Wilson and Sue Bird will have a one on one interview. 
all the NFL pre kickoff news and on Monday night football Josh Allen and the Bills take on the Niners whose new home is in Arizona playing in Glendale 8 o'clock Eastern time 5 o'clock on the West Coast also on the app final two minutes here Gene Tech's going to drop to four and six who knows if they're still in play for a bowl game none of the normal rules seem to apply there's a lot of confusion about the, the bowl games the ACC has lost four bowl games that they had tie ins to cancellations casualties of COVID but the Hokies will still have hope we'll see how that plays out they'll be four and six trying to end a four game losing streak here against the Cavaliers in their rivalry game next week yeah hopefully they're going to get some players back healthy and for Clemson it's a matter of getting a couple weeks with the move the ACC made for them in Notre Dame they both are now off and chance to regroup get some people healthy find out the status of James Skowski try to get Tyler Davis back at 100 percent and see if they can go and and uh, be as close as they can possibly be to a healthiest roster that they've had in weeks. Could be a lot of hype and a lot of talk. People wondering, can it possibly match the hype? Can it possibly live up to chapter one? Pretty hard act to top. Double OT thriller in South Bend. Oh, they, they they're thinking about Gatorade here, huh? I guess you, you clinch a spot in the ACC championship game. Is that really worth the Gatorade bath? Well, I don't know what we'd have to ask Maria what the official temperature is, but that that's that'd be a cold ba Gatorade bath, right? Uyunglele has got his hand in the bucket. Uh, CFP selection show December 20th. And then the semifinals, of course, are in the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl. Heisman will follow that done virtually. And then, of course, the championship game down in Miami risen by AT and T and but 12,000 fans similar crowd what they have for the Hurricanes and Dolphins games. Hey a lot of people that are wondering what's going on with the postseason you know with everything that's been going on in this country are they are they playing a postseason in college football and the answer to that as of as of right now is yes just saw the dates January 1 a big day with a Rose Bowl and a Sugar Bowl the semifinals for the top four teams in the country. I'm surprised to hear that there was confusion. A lot of people apparently didn't get the word, but they, they've had from the beginning of the season the plan to have the regular 14 playoff bracket. Dabo's running, by the way. He, he caught him before. Before, oh, he let him do it. Oh, he, he, just, he just gave in. He said, <laughs> "Yeah, bring it on." <laughs> well, the, the orange britches come out when it's a championship phase, and they have outside, taken outside. a crucial Defense. step. They'll go for a sixth consecutive That'll ACC five, title. This and also applies for a 10 second runoff. Please reset the game clock to six seconds. Okay, Jeff. Do your housekeeping. And, and you know, continue the point how rare is it for Clemson to have an opportunity to pay back an opponent for a loss earlier in the season? You don't get that chance very often. For Clemson, it's flat out must win. You got to win that game in the conference yeah. championship to get in the playoff. It may not be for Notre Dame. We'll talk I, a lot more about that. Yeah, I think I think Notre Dame loses. And they're still in a really good spot to uh, to be in the in the four. Well, it was close at halftime. Tech came close to making it 17 apiece on that hail mary, a half yard short of the goal line. But after halftime, Clemson scores four touchdowns and wins it by 35. Trevor Lawrence scores twice on the ground throws one touchdown pass and the Tigers will have a week off to kick their feet up as will the Fighting Irish and then a collision on the afternoon of December the 19th for the conference championship and a lot more at stake. Nolan Turner in the amazing senior class at Clemson which finished their careers 27 and 0 at home will go for that fourth ACC title and yet another college football playoff bid. ETN not an explosive night but he will figure prominently you figure in the games to come for Clemson. And for Trevor it is win number 33 which puts him ahead of Rodney Williams Taj Boyd and Deshaun Watson already he was part of a pretty cool club and now he'll be the leader of the pack a record that jazz might stand for a long time at Clemson 33 and counting for Lawrence.
They weren't sure what to expect. Would the Hokies have some fight? They did. Hooker, as you see, who started the game kind of limping off. Spent a lot of the last part of the game shivering on the sidelines. Clemson over there where their fans would normally be. They'd be <laughs> singing the alma mater with the, uh, with the fans who were not here. Their cardboard cutouts in front of them. But some of the rituals, even in 2020, continue. <laughs> A little surreal. As we say, improvise and adjust. Sing to the cardboard cutouts. <laughs> Maria Taylor will work her way down to the bat. Choir. And here's the thoughts from Trevor Lawrence momentarily. As crazy as it's been, as many wrinkles and obstacles and adjustments, there are still constants in college football, and the Clemson Tigers are one of them. It'll be a pretty jubilant lot. Oh, they'll, they'll, they'll do some dancing. There'll be some there dancing going on tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dabble will crank it up. Because they took nothing for granted. This was a must-win game to secure a spot in the ACC championship game. They could have lost control of their destiny. Now all of their goals are very much in play. Well, all their goals, and, you know, they, they much like Notre Dame, off to a little bit of a competitive start tonight. You know, Virginia Tech, to their credit, after losing three straight games, they, they came out ready to play. And uh, it eventually, you know, the cream was able to rise and, and Clemson was able to get out and, and pulled away pretty dramatically at the end. And now the Tigers and Trevor Lawrence can put 100% of their focus in the rematch with Notre Dame, of course, the game that Lawrence was not able to play the first time. To Maria. Well, Trevor, anytime you guys are in the orange britches, we know that a trip to a championship is on the line. What does it mean to be heading to your sixth straight ACC title game? Man, it feels good. A lot of, a lot of work put in, especially in a year like this year. <clears throat> Everything's kind of up in the air. And just to it just shows kind of how, how we've kept focus. Obviously, this season hasn't been perfect, but um, just kind of keeping our head down and working. And just, it just goes to prove that and just really happy. Everything's in front of us that we, that we wanted from the beginning, so just happy to be in that position. You mentioned the season not being perfect, and there's one loss on the schedule that you actually get to go out and avenge and play in a game that you didn't get to play in earlier yeah. this season. What does that mean for you? It means a lot. I mean, usually um, – like our last loss was in the national championship. Didn't get to go and play that game again or get to go play that team again. So uh, I'm excited to be able to go back and play them again. Obviously, I wasn't able to play, so I'm excited for that challenge. And just I think the team's excited for it, uh, to get another chance and have, have a couple weeks to prepare and get ready for Charlotte. Besides you being on the field with your team, how has this team evolved and how will it, the game be different when you play Notre Dame? Um, I think just like any team, you get better every week. And I think we're a different team here in week I guess we played 10 games now, and that was the, I don't know, the fifth or, or sixth or seventh game. So I just think we've gotten a lot better. We've got some guys healthy. Um, but other than that, we, we just got better at the little things, and that's just what good teams do. They get better all year. Um, they don't let one loss define them. So we're just going to keep moving forward and, and get better. I don't know if you know this, but this is your 33rd win as a starter at Clemson, so that makes you <laughs> the career leader in wins. <laughs> How yeah, do you describe yeah. what it means to go up <laughs> that list? That's all. I mean, Coach Sweeney's been talking to me about it kind of even before the season and just something that we've been thinking about. It's just uh, just an honor for me. It really proves more just the, the kind of teams I've been a part of. Obviously, um, I have had, I've had a part in that, but just played with some great players, some great coaches, and uh, grateful to be a part of Clemson. Uh, it's, been, it's been really good to me. Well, congratulations on the win, Trevor. Thank you. Both teams will have the all-time leader for starting quarterback's career wins, Lawrence, and, of course, Ian Book, who joined us earlier. Minus Lawrence. Aaron Williams got out early. This is a very quick score for Notre Dame. Then they went about 58 minutes without scoring an offensive touchdown. They got the fumble off ETN. And then the late touchdowns. And what's going to be different about, about round two in, in your view? Both defenses want to play better. Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's at a neutral site. Championship on the line. Uh, Clemson's going to be a lot healthier, you would think, than they were when they went to South Bend. I think Notre Dame is already probably tired of hearing about, well, now you're going to play the real Clemson. They're, I think they're thinking, okay, we're, we're ready to play the real Clemson. So I, I think it's uh, whoever executes that day better ends up pulling away with a win, but it's two evenly matched teams 
teams going head-to-head with a championship on the line. You're right. Ian Book was gracious when he joined us earlier, but Notre Dame has to hear, hey, a monstrous landmark win has an asterisk because he didn't have to face Lawrence. I mean, that'll be ammunition for Brian Kelly. They just have to resist the idea that it's not must-win for them. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They're going to play with an edge. It doesn't matter what's at stake. It's, it's a championship on the line. That's most important. That's two weeks from tonight. We can't wait for Charlotte. In the meantime, thanks for joining us here. Game produced by Bill Bennell, directed by Derek Mobley. So for Kirk and Maria and Bill LaMagna and Chris Felique and everybody here in Blacksburg, Chris Fowler saying good night from Blacksburg. Kevin Deandi, Mark Sanchez coming up after the break from the studio.